Hello everyone, I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's Wednesday, December 8th, 2021 at 11 a.m. Central Time as I'm broadcasting to you live. <clears throat> oh my gosh, all of a sudden I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I am going to show you a fun fold card today called a balcony fold card. And um, this card is one that I've seen out there. Um, but I adapted it a little bit so that it would fit into the A2 size envelopes that Stampin' Up! Um, sells. And so we are going to do that version of the card today. We're going to be using products from the Bloom Where You're Planted suite, which is in the annual catalog. And I'm going to share that with you in just a second here. Um, but first of all, I want to tell you to comment away because your comments are going to enter you into a prize drawing at the end. And we have a moderator with us today. Her name is Trisha Joseph. She is with us pretty much every week. So welcome to Trisha and um, please say hello to her. She's the one that's got her name a little bit written a little bit differently. It has the wrench symbol next to it. And um, she answers questions. She guides you to the right places. Um, she just helps out in so many ways. So please give a warm welcome to Trisha. Uh, it's really hard for me during a live to actually read everyone's comments as they come through. So um, she's kind of like my um, my other half. <laughs> Love you, Trisha. Thank you. Um, so we we want to we want to see your comments. We um, I love reading the comments. Uh, I love hearing where you're from. I love hearing about your your crafting um, skills. If you're a beginner, if you're an avid crafter, what else you do besides paper crafting too? That's always fun to read. Or what you're doing at the time that you're watching the live. <laughs> so comment away. It's fun to see all those things. Um, I also like hearing your helpful tips. I learn from you. So please share any helpful tips along the way. If you're watching after the live, comment away as well, especially within the first week of that video being posted because you'll get entered into a prize drawing as well. So there's three prizes, two that we draw during the live and one that we draw after just for participating and making me feel like I'm not alone. <laughs> so, so yay. Thank you so much for joining. Um, let's go down to the desktop right away so that you can see the annual catalog opened up to pages 80, 81. Um, this is where you'll find the Bloom Where You're Planted suite. And it's basically plants, potted plants, hanging plants, um, lots of greens. I love greens. I love leaves. And so um, this, this suite is right up my alley. By the way, this suite is being featured in our all-star tutorial bundle this month. So if you place an order in um, my online store and it's at least $50 during the month of December, you'll get the exclusive tutorial, which includes my tutorial plus tutorials from 11 other demonstrators across the world. Um, and we um, do the measurements in both Imperial and metric for these. So everybody and anybody can access and recreate. Um, anyways, you, you will get that tutorial for free with a $50 order. So make sure that you are checking that out. You can also purchase the tutorial. You can go to my blog at stampyourartout.com. Um, go under, I believe it's under classes. I know that's a weird tab, but under there you'll find tutorials for sale. And so you can purchase the tutorial there. But on that note, we have some really wonderful projects in that tutorial bundle. When this blog post that's connected to the video that we're doing right now goes live, it's going to go live at 3 p.m. today instead of 12.15. Um, when it goes live at 3 p.m. Central Time, you will be able to click on that link. You'll be able to see photos of the project that I'm going to share today. You're going to be able to see measurements. Um, and I apologize, they're only in Imperial or um, inches and stuff like that because I didn't have time to do metric this time. I'm so sorry. Um, but then you'll also be able to access the supply list and you'll be able to print off a PDF that it's a one page PDF that has a couple photos in it, measurements and supplies as well. And I'll show you that too in just a second. Um, but the real awesome thing about this, um, this tutorial uh, bundle being shown in this video and um, featuring this suite is that you'll be able to scroll down all the way. I'm stumbling over my words today, you guys. I'm so sorry. Um, but you'll be able to scroll down to the bottom of that post and you'll be able to click on the names of the other participants in this 
um, tutorial bundle because we're doing a blog hop. And basically when you click on their name, it'll just guide you to their blog post where they've shared another idea using the, uh, the products in this suite. So we have the stamp set, we have the coordinating dies, we have these things here, which are called paper lattices. And then we have, of course, the designer paper, which is always in my mind, um, like one of the best parts of any suite. Um, so let's look at the card that we're gonna share. <laughs> Why am I stumbling over my words today? I don't know. So we've got a belly band going around here. Um, that's because this card has got a little bit of stuff in it. It's not real super thick, but it doesn't lie flat as easily as maybe another card. You can see already that the fun fold is within. So as we open it up, we've got this, right? And then when you open it up all the way, these little areas can pop out and you can set the card up like this. It's called a balcony card. The ones that I've been seeing are done so that they fold this way and they are six by six when folded this way. But I wanted to pre protect all of these little guys that are within the balcony area of the card. And so I popped them inward. And when I did that, I said, oh my gosh, I don't have to make a three by six card. I can make a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. And um, it can fit into our medium size envelopes or our A2. So that's all you have to do is just remember to poke them in when you close the card so that you can mail it. Isn't that cute? What a great way to show off uh, potted plants. It looks like, to me, it looks like I'm entering my bank. Um, they have this area right, with, right before you actually get into the bank itself, but they have, um, I forget what it's called, like an atrium or an entryway area. And all of these little um, potted plants are within this, this tiered area with, and then there's waterfalls in there. It's really pretty. I love just looking at it. So anyways, we're gonna make uh, a duplicate of my bank uh, atrium. <laughs> All right, so I am going to click on a couple things here. I wanna have the comments come through on my iPad. I keep looking over at my laptop. There we go, I can see people's names. Oh, I'm glad you're loving this card, yay. So um, it's, it's gonna be quite easy to do. It just has a lot of little pieces. So it's a super simple concept. In fact, I'm gonna keep that belly band off because I like to look at what I'm doing um, or look at what I've created and try to duplicate it almost exactly when I share the actual uh, project with you step by step. So these are the papers that are in the uh, Bloom Where You're Planted suite or Bloom Where You're Planted pack of designer papers. So it, I don't know if you've discovered this. If you're a Stampin' Up! fan, you may have noticed that the papers are named after the suite and then the stamp set and the dies have a slightly different name to them. So I'll share those in just a second. But I have loved this one a lot. I've used that brick design um, I've used this pattern a lot. So I only have this small portion left <laughs> and the papers that I'm going to be using on the card. Um, but the, the papers do come in 12 by 12. And you can see from this side that you've got potted plants that you can cut out or you can cut around and have as a main part of your card. On the back side of that one, we have wood grain papers. Um, by the way, I would love to know if you think, if you're one of those people that comes back pretty much every week, what do you think of the lighting going on right now? Because I did some purchasing. <laughs> I did some improvements <laughs> since last time. This one here is a bunch of pots and the dies actually die cut each one of these. So if you wanted to, you could go crazy and die cut, die cut every one of these. And then let's just go to this one next. Then you can pair it up with these which most of these can die cut as well and i say most because there's ones like this little guy here um i think it's this one here that also don't die cut but most of them do so you can just assemble pots and plants uh potted potted plants with just the dies and the paper alone it's a jaw dropper marcia i'm glad you like it <laughs> and then these are the back sides or are you talking about the card the paper is so pretty though isn't it the back sides of those, so you have more of an up-close wood grain, um, and then you have uh, the foliage in kind of a, uh, what's it called, gray granite. It's the warmer of the grays. 
Um, lots of greens. I'll tell you the colors in just a second. This is one of my favorite sheets as well, and I'm surprised I still have a 12 by 12 piece of it left. Oh, the lighting is perfect. Thank you. And then on the back side, we have some gray granite bricks. Um, this one's just a gorgeous sheet in and of itself. And this one is fun because when you have a paper that's got a design on the bottom and on the top upside down, if you cut them, if you cut the paper right across in half and then cut into um, three pieces, so you've got a four by six piece, you have a layer for the front of a card. Um, of course, you'd probably want to trim off just a little bit more if you're doing the A2 size um, card or the um, four and a quarter by five and a half. On the back side of that looks like stone, so almost like a stone kind of wash. The colors of the paper. <laughs> I guess I put that away. Um, hang on. I can find that really quick. They are... Cajun Craze, Cinnamon Cider, Evening Evergreen, Garden Green, Gray Granite, Just Jade, and um, Basic White. So we're going to put that off to the side, and I'll show you a couple other pieces that are in this suite. So we have the Plentiful Plants stamp set. We have the dies. And by the way, some of you often ask where I get my magnets and the little sleeves to hold them in, because this is how I organize my, my dies. I get them from Stampin' Storage, and the link to that uh, these two products are in the description of my video. So these dies are called Perfect Plants dies. So Perfect Plants comes with or goes with plentiful plants. You can see that there's framelit images that I was talking about to cut out the plants and the pots. There's also these more detailed ones if you wanted to have a hanging plant holder or um, you know just a, a different kind of pot that has um, you can put that maybe on the outside of this one or something. Um, these, I believe, are just more fancy pots too, and then you've got kind of a grassy plant right there. Lots of sentiments. You've got um, thank yous and love yous and um, you touched my heart type of thing. So it's a very, like it's a grateful kind of stamp set, right? That's the theme. And then the last thing that uh, you can get for this suite is the paper lattice. And the paper lattices, lattices, is that how you'd say the plural? Um, they are cinnamon cider-ish look or craft or whatever. Um, on both sides, but you can take and sponge on them and color them or you could even emboss on them and make them white. There's a sample in the catalog with uh, a white one. So, um, you know, lots of fun options with that. So those four items, these three plus the paper, you can purchase if you want to with just one order number. That is the beauty of a suite is you can purchase them just with one order number. Let us go to the desktop now because I want to bring in the measurements. Um, hang on, sorry. Okay, there we go. Make sure my computer is ready. There are the measurements and the supplies and my head's in the way. <laughs> hang on. I'm going to shrink my head just a little bit. Push me over. Okay, there. So there you can see all the supplies on the right and the measurements for Imperial on the left. There's a ton of little pieces, which is, again, the reason why I did not have the time to convert to metric. Because metric cards, the A4 cardstock is a totally different size. And so you have to adjust things, not just, it's not just a, um, you know, one inch equals so many centimeters kind of uh, conversion or whatever. So. It would have taken me lots of time, and I'm so sorry. Maybe in the future. But you can take a screenshot of this, or you can download it. Once again, this is going to be something you can click on and download from my blog post at 3 p.m. Central Time. All right. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad that you're enjoying the lights. So what I got were these um, lights that have a diffuser, kind of like a... Um, I don't know if I can even... It's, it's got like a, like a shower cap on it. <laughs> and so instead of having shadows, it kind of diffuses any shadows and makes things more even. Um, I should have gotten these in the past and just never had. But then when I did a box opening video with my um, upline and friend Susan Campfield, she came over here. Uh, I don't remember the reason why we did that now that you think. Oh, because we also did a swap the same night. So she came over here, brought her lighting, and... Um, I was like, oh my God, those are the answer to my prayers. So yeah, I had to get those. We're going to cut some pieces. I am going to bring you down to my desktop again. Oops, hang on.
there I am. Okay, let's start by cutting our base paper. Now, if you look at this, this is a, a piece, a half a sheet of cardstock, right? A half a sheet of eight and a half by 11. Um, but if we cut it this way instead, you can actually get these other pieces out of the rest of it, um, except for the ones that you're going to be die cutting. So then you would need like another, like some scraps on the side. Oh, also the sentiment pieces, you couldn't necessarily pull out of there. But these largest pieces here, you could get out of one sheet if you got creative with it. But I'm going to just cut in half because I already cut the other ones. So we're going to cut in half this way. Again, this is eight and a half by 11. We're going to cut um, 11 inches in half at the five and a half inch mark. So we'll bring it right to there. Put the arm down on our trimmer. The scoring blade we just push out of the way and the dark blade cuts. And then we can take and score it with the scoring blade halfway through eight and a half is um, four and a quarter. So line that up and score. And now we have the base of our card. <clears throat> I, I think that's what threw me off in the beginning, you guys, was the um, frog in the throat. <laughs> but now I feel like we're moving through as long as I don't get the frog in my throat again. I don't know what that was about. It's probably because it's the first time I've talked today. <laughs> oh, and yes, Pammy mentioned my blouse. Um, so I was having trouble matching. I was having trouble finding some clothes to match today because I don't own a lot of green clothes. Um, even though it's my favorite color, it doesn't necessarily look the best on my complexion. <laughs> so I don't, I don't own green clothes. Um, yeah, but I found this. This is a summer shirt. So we have the temperature up really high because it's, it's winter here. We had like one degree, felt like 11 degrees just a few days ago. It's really cold out. I have a heater in my, an extra heater in my room down here on the floor. <laughs> All right, so um, this piece here is gonna become the belly band. It's just a strip that is one and a quarter inches by 11. It doesn't have to be that long, but I have it that way. And then we have another strip, which is one and a half by seven and a half inches and it is scored in the middle so half of seven and a half is three and three quarter inches and then i also scored a half inch in from each end and the reason for that is because this is going to become one of the balconies okay um, then we have another piece this is the taller balcony that's going to sit behind and so that one's slightly taller it is two and a half inches by five and a half. And this one is scored in the middle at two and three quarter inches, and then also scored at one and a half in from each end. The half inch in from each end is the part that's going to receive the adhesive to add to the card. So you can kind of see it getting built up here already, right? And then we need to cut from the same strip six more pieces. And two of them are going to go on top of here and here two are going to go here and here and then two are going to go at the very top of the card so if we look at that again here we have one two three four five six so the measurements for those this uh dimension in through here and i want to make sure i got it right i'm looking at my designer paper um that measurement is going to be three and an eighth so let's take the front one we'll do that first this piece is just under one and a half inches. Let's zoom in just a tad here. It's just under one and a half. And um, so it's one and three eighths, and we're going to go just under the uh, three and a quarter inch, which is the space from here to here. And that's gonna be three and an eighth. Okay, and I wanna make sure I do it right. <laughs> now, why am I cutting from one strip? We're gonna do two of them, by the way because that way when they go onto this piece, they flow together. So as if they are one long piece, right? So that, that was the reasoning for it. I didn't wanna have um, the, especially these lines here, the horizontal lines, I didn't want them to be off. You know what I mean? That would have looked funny going across. I wanted them to be at the same level. So that piece is gonna go with that. We can move that out of the way. This one is the next level back. It's this, it's this level here. And so that one is just under two and a half inches. It's two and three quarter inches tall. And the dimension from here to here is two and a quarter. 
So we want to make that two and an eighth inches. One, two of those, and they're going to go side by side onto this piece, okay, right here. And then we need a couple pieces across the top. And that's our third level back right here. Those pieces are gonna go just under four and a quarter inches. So they're gonna be cut at four and one eighth. And they are a half inch tall, okay? Hello, Jean from Oregon. <laughs> All right, so now, I hope you have enough paper, Bonnie. Bonnie says, I hope I have enough paper. So you've been loving this paper. Yay, so have I. All right, the other pieces that are cut and ready to go are our layers for the front of our card. So this is another piece of designer paper from the pack. Um, I didn't indicate on the PDF that you want to use a different design, but you don't necessarily have to either. I mean, you could put bricks there. I just think that the greenery on the front is going to make it stunning <laughs> in my mind. And then we have some layers. We have the thank you layer. And I'll just grab my, my, my ruler here. So, oh, I forgot to mention, this is four by five and a quarter, and the piece behind it is four and an eighth by five and three eighths, okay? These pieces for the thank you, which goes on the inside of the card right here, is one inch by two and a half, and this one is one and an eighth. So everything kind of has an eighth of an inch border by two and five eighths. And I've already stamped that one. I've already stamped quite a few of these pieces. This one here is going to be our other sentiment piece and that's gonna go on the front of our card. Oh, on the belly band, there it is. It's gonna go on the belly band and that one measures one and a quarter inches by two and a quarter inches. We will stamp that. In fact, we need to stamp a few more pieces here. So I've got my scraps. You also, you're also gonna to wanna to have tons of white scraps and a little scrap of the cinnamon cider colored cardstock. So let's stamp a few of them. The four inks that you will need, sorry, coming really close to the camera really quick here. The four inks that you will need to duplicate this are gray granite, just jade garden green, and evening evergreen. The evening evergreen acts as my dark one for my sentiments. Um, I like to have a dark one for sentiments. I like them to stand out. Thanks, Shirley. This ruler I got years and years ago when Stampin' Up, actually I have two of them, um, Stampin' Up sold these at like a convention or whatever and I had to nab them up. Um, but yeah, so I like to have a dark one for my sentiments, but I'm also using this for one of the images. And then this one's going to become the pot, uh, the plant, the, the pot that goes in the hanging planter. So let's start with that and we will ink that up. This is, by the way, and let me show that to you again. It's one of those um, uh, stamp sets that has like the, the look of dark and light. Um, I wanna say it's distinctive. I hope I'm right. <laughs> so um, we're gonna ink that up and we're gonna stamp that down onto our smallest of our white scraps. And you guys are calling out to me right now. Rachel, you're using photopolymer. Sorry, I'm grabbing it. I'm grabbing it. Here we go. Let's see if we can, yep. Sometimes the ink will stick to the paper. There, now we have a firm foam surface underneath. There we go. So there's our image of our pot. And then we need um, another one of the, no, we're not doing another one of those. We're just, just gonna die cut that one. We need this guy. This one is a really fun image. It looks like, to me, it looks like a bunch of berries hanging down. I don't know what it is, but we're gonna make that one dark. In my exclusive project, I made it pink, as if it was berries, but we're making it dark. We're just doing all greens, okay? So we're gonna stamp that down. That's using the evening evergreen color. And then we also need our sentiment, and this one has to get centered. So we'll stamp that. Um, a little note with the biggest thanks, we'll also stamp that in the evening evergreen color. How many of you are calling this handsome hunter? I keep making that mistake and doing that over and over and over again. <laughs> we had a color back a long time ago that it wasn't even, I mean, it was kind of close to that, but it was different. 
I don't know. I don't know what my issue is. Um, and then let's see here. We need, we need another, where did it go? Oh, no, we don't need another. We just need a die cut. Okay. So then I've got for us already two of these, cause there's a lot of die cutting in this card. If you want to have all those layers of plants, we already have two of these ready. We have a couple of these branches and one of them we're going to cut down a bit. And that one I use the just jade color with. Um, we also have this piece, which is going to go in the hanging plant and that's just jade. And then I didn't stamp with the garden green, but that's what this one got. And, um, I think I swear, oh, here it is. <laughs> I swear. Don't swear, Rachel. It's not, not very nice. Okay. So there we go. We have two others that are die cut ready to go. So there's, there are the four colors, lots of colors. Let's do some die cutting. Close these things up, move them out of the way. Make sure we have room. The only other piece that we really need to pay attention to right now is this one here. And this I cut from, um, in fact, you can see it really well against that, can't you? That I cut from the paper lattice. And you can see how I cut it. I cut just below that um, second row so that I was going in and out and I didn't have any kind of like mm, sharp ends, I want to call it. So there's that piece. Okay, we have our table cleaned up. Let's bring in the big machine, the big boss. <laughs> green is your favorite, is your new favorite color, thanks to Stampin' Up. There's a lot of stuff in green lately, isn't there? I'm, I'm not complaining. I love green. Sorry, I'm gonna keep these together, just put them off to the sides so that we can bring this big machine in. So the big boss, we also have a little boss. These are the Stampin' Cut and Emboss machines by Stampin' Up. They are pretty, they're super pretty. I mean, they got silver plates on them that say Stampin' Up. Um, you get everything you need when you buy it. So if you're thinking of a Christmas gift for somebody, this would be a really generous gift. <laughs> All right, let me get the dies and we're going to set those up with sticky notes. I think that's going to be easiest. So we'll bring in our fluorescent yellow or orange uh, sticky notes. If I can peel them apart, I'm having an issue with dry hands lately. I'm forgetting to use my gloves when I wash dishes and I'm starting to get that, you know, you know how it gets if you're older like me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to lay that on there so that we can see the image centered within. Then we're going to just stick that right across and we'll slide it up a little bit. Do the same thing with this one. Velcro, Velcro fingers. You guys call those Velcro fingers? <laughs> I know that's a brand name, but um, my sister and I do say that about our fingers when they get dry in the winter. Okay, so there's that one. And we're going to shove that one up and then we need the pot. You can still see all this, right? Okay, and that's going to get die cut like that. You can die cut most of these all together, um, but you have those duplicates, which is why I didn't want to do all the die cutting in front of you. I'm just doing a, a little bit. Um, as long as you have small little scraps or you stamp them close enough but far enough away so that the dies can go around them, you can get a lot of dies cut at the same time. Let's just pull this up for a bit to get the top layer on. My layers are bottom is number one. The next one is number two, which is the die adapter. My ring keeps turning. And then we have the plates. So we have two of the um, number threes. All of our, all of our um, sandwich pieces, we call them, are numbered. So it's easy to go ahead and put things together. I'm trying to keep the table from moving. Okay, just crank it, Rachel. There we go. So we have this fun little macrame hanging thing. You could do that in white. You could do it in gray. You could do it in, gosh, I don't know, a rainbow of colors. Did you guys do that in art class, make pot holders? We did. <laughs> I don't know if I made it that elaborate, but it was, it was uh, similar. There's our green leaves. <clears throat> 
There's our dark green berries. <laughs> and then we have our potted plant. Or our pot, sorry. Okay, let's just move those over there, shove this to the back. The back of my room has not been cleaned up since I did my box opening. I still have to put all those things away. We're it's time to assemble. I'm so happy. This is the fun part, right? It all comes together. Okay, so we have our card base. And I think we're going to do, um, we're going to build the inside first. So let's take this piece here and we're going to put adhesive on these little areas, the outside areas. I'm going to use seal. You could use multi-purpose liquid glue. You could use um, uh, seal plus, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'm only going to do one side first. In fact, let's just score that with the bone folder. And then <clears throat> we are going to place this. I forgot how I did this now. <laughs> oh yeah. I have to go inside out, inside out, fold this back. And then we push that to the inside. Oh, this isn't the one we add first. Rachel's, Rachel's remembering now. It's this one first. We got to add this one first. And there is a reason for it. Let's keep those guys in order. We're adding this one first. Because this one is the innermost layer. Let's get that to come back like that. Let's just fold that really well. Now we're going to stick it in there. And it's going to go all the way down to the bottom. So this bottom edge is lined up with this bottom edge. So you're going to put it in there, you're going to put it down flat, and you're going to close this on top like that. Okay? Then when we open it up, and I will zoom in just a bit, then when we open it up, we're going to glue this side. Let's just make sure all those creases are nice and crisp, because I forgot to do that. We're going to go ahead and close on this side. So the card can be closed shut all the way, which is more important than a card being able to open all the way. Do you see there's a little bit of a gap there? That's totally fine. That happens anytime you do something like that right in the seam of a card, it's going to happen. But we can close it all the way. And because of that, that allows us to position this piece the best way now. So we can go ahead and push that in because it's going to, it would have been too close had we done this one first. Push that down, use our bone folder, give it a good crease, put a little adhesive there, and close on top again, making sure everything's lying nice and flat and lined up along that bottom edge. All right, so there we have our, our two tiers. Now you can all leave. <laughs> You've learned how to make a balcony card, a balcony fold card. But we got to decorate. So if you're going to stick with me, we're going to go ahead and add all of our layers on now. I'll go ahead and put these on next. I hope everyone's having a nice Wednesday. There's lots going on in the Stampin' Up! world. It's, a, it's an amazing Wednesday today. And I'm sure some of you who are demonstrators or are fans of Stampin' Up! product have already called out in the live comments you better tell about the sale. Oops, I gotta get that straight. So I have a hard time talking about other things while I'm teaching, <laughs> but there is a sale going on right now. A $50 order in the US qualifies you for free shipping. Um, the amount can vary per country. Um, so whatever you know area you're in for Stampin' Up! products, you'll want to um, check out what the minimum is. But in the US, it's a $50 plus order, so $50 minimum, um, earns you free shipping today. It's so awesome. Okay, so you see how I'm looking at the bottom here and on this side. You kind of have to eyeball both sides at the same time. Oh, see that? You, I didn't know which, which way was up and which way it was down, so look at your patterns to make sure that you're following that same pattern if you have one in your, in your paper. Okay, there's that. And then these guys go next, and they go right up to the top. And there's also um, a list of products that are being discontinued. They are called Last Chance Products. Um, some of them are discounted, I believe up to 50% off. So if you 
are someone who has like a wish list from the mini catalog that is current right now. This one here, which used to be called our holiday catalog. It's our July through December catalog. If there's something in here that you need to have and it's on the last chance list, then you want to make sure that you're grabbing that up too. And this would be a good day to buy it. <laughs> okay, so here's a, here's a really easy example. I had it positioned this way, but it would have been slightly off. Can you kind of see that? So make sure you're looking at your patterns before you stick them down. So there's the last chance list. There's also the clearance rack that got refreshed. Was it like at the beginning of this week? No, maybe it was a little bit last week. I don't remember. Anyways, there's still some good stuff in there and those are from past catalogs, things that retire that you may not know if they're coming back or not, but Stampin' Up! says, you know what, we still have a surplus of this, so we're gonna put it on the clearance rack. So you can go to um, my blog, click on the shop tab and check out the clearance rack, the um, last chance list stuff, um, and the fact that there's free shipping. Just scroll down to the bottom of the last blog post and you'll see all of the information on that. Okay, sorry. All right, so now you didn't see what I did. I made a mistake over on the other screen. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and build up our plants. And I'm gonna start from the back and go forward. So this one's gonna go on next. We're gonna take our um, silicone pad and I still love the sponges that Stampin' Up! discontinued. You can get sponges, crafting sponges somewhere, I'm sure. We're gonna take and put a little splotch of glue there because this is my favorite way to do these intricate dies. I know that we have the adhesive sheets and you can put them on the back of your cardstock and then die cut, but sometimes I feel like I waste too much cardstock when I use them because I don't know how big of a piece I need and I have to trim around, I don't know. It's just, this seems less messy. <laughs> We all have our thing, right? So we're gonna go ahead. Oh, we can't add that yet. Hang on. We gotta put the pot in there. So the pot and the plant have to go on. So we need to first do this. The plant up on top is gonna go in and out like that. And I better make sure I'm copying. Yes, it goes in and out like that. Clever, right? Just like that. And then we flip it over and we add this to that area. And we're just gonna go, go ahead and put glue on the back side of all of this and stick the pot on there. And then we can add the whole thing to the card. So as long as this stays in place, right? Stay in place. <laughs> all right. Don't move on me. And I'm only doing the bottom half right now, just where the pot's gonna go. Okay, so that's gonna get stuck on there and we can turn it to the front and adjust it and get that plant positioned, repositioned again. Ah. <laughs> Hang on, have to use two hands there. Okay. All right, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna snip something. Don't tell anybody. There, <laughs> I couldn't get it straight. <laughs> All right, so there's that. This stuff dries fast, you guys. Oh my gosh. That is why, I, I don't know if I was talking to Trisha yesterday or if I was talking to, or like a couple of days ago, or if it was Teresa, but we were talking about our favorite glues. And um, I do like this glue, but for when I'm layering on larger things, I choose to do the dry tape type stuff like seal because this stuff dries fast <laughs> all of a sudden you're like oh my goodness okay let's go up here and sponge that area you can put a little seal down here on the big part of the plant and then we'll come in here and we'll just connect it about an inch and a quarter in now I originally designed this so that this hanging plant here was popping out also, but um, it kept catching on the plants that were in the, <laughs> see, it's already sticking down, man. There we go. Um, but it was catching on the plants that were along here and it just didn't, that didn't work. So, okay, let's move this off to the side just temporarily. We're gonna start building up these plants and I have to look at my 
my other card to make sure I'm doing it right. So this one's just going to get stuck in like that. So to do that, I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive right here. Oops, can you see that? It's behind my head, sorry. Just a little bit of adhesive right there. And that's going to get stuck like that. And then we have um, a leaf that is going to be cut from this one. So we're just going to cut right through here. This leaf is going to be attached to this one right about here. So I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive back here, just in the middle of the leaf. Can you see that? No, you can't. Rachel's head's in the way again. Right there, just in the middle. And then as I attach this, that middle section of the leaf is just going to touch that leaf. Okay, so that one is going to go down on the other side and we're actually going to cover up this leaf. It's going to disappear. You'll, you'll see. So we can go ahead and glue that one. Bring it up here so people can see Rachel. So we're going to go right across that and that's going to become the part that actually holds onto on the back side here. It's going to look like, like that. Now, when you're doing this, you have to be careful so that your plants aren't going beyond this wall or this middle section. Because if we're going to poke them in, they have to fold in, right? Um, you can't have them you can't have them going across the middle, I guess is what I'm saying. Or, you, or you're going to have to put a score line in there or something, okay? The next layer is with this set of two leaves and this one here. These two are going to go on top of each other like that. And so you can see where the glue needs to go. And if you're, if you're more of a fan of like glue dots, you could do that. You could, you know, put a little mark there and put a glue dot in there. I'm just going to eyeball with my sponge again. It's going to go right about there. And that's going to attach right in through here. As long as you get one of the leaves to attach. And then the other part, oops, let's do this one first. We're going to put this one down in first. And that one's going to go like this. So we can put glue on. I need more. We're going to put glue on the two sections here now instead of just one. And then we'll tuck that right about here. Then this piece is going to go right next to it like that. And again, we don't want to cross over the middle or we won't be able to fold the card shut. So as we're adding this in, don't go that far. Do you see what I mean? It's going to cross, go across the middle and we won't be able to fold it. So we'll add some glue down there. We'll bring it over here and I'm going to tuck that back behind, I guess. I guess you could have it go in front. That's going to go like that. And then the other side, we have three left. Um, this one's going to go on first and we're going to put glue here. I do love this piece a lot because it allows me to have the plant looking differently every time I add it. That's going to go on like that. I mean, if you look at this, it totally looks like three different types of images, doesn't it? And then this one connects to the front of this one and we're going to connect it. I'm making sure I'm doing this right. We're going to connect it like that. Okay, so this is where the glue goes here. That is a trick to do, you guys. Always set it down first, eyeball where it's going to go, make sure it works. And then you can uh and then you can, you know, memorize where that piece went and give it a gl good glue. Okay, so this one also tucks behind on that leaf. So I'm going to put some glue on that leaf and along the bottom. And that's going to go right behind here like this. Making sure we're not overlapping the middle. Because <laughs> again, we have to be able to fold this down and so nothing can cross in that middle. All right, success so far. Yay, let's take our thank you. 
and layer that. Oops, little piece from our die. That's gonna go on here. And this piece is gonna come across and go right here. And it can really go wherever you want it to go. But I played around with that piece so many times, I can't even tell you. I'm like, does it look better here or here? You know what? It doesn't matter on that one. <laughs> okay, and then for this, we'll layer these pieces onto each other on the front of the card. This is like the easiest part, right? That goes here onto the front. You have about a sixteenth of an inch of white showing all the way around. And then we need to do the belly band because otherwise our card's going to go like this, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to kind of sit open a lot. So we need to belly band it shut. So we're going to take that white strip and I just put it right through the, the middle. You can put it through the thickest part if you really are worried about it, but you can take it off and on from the top, which is the thinner part. And you just wrap to the back and then you wrap to the back and you want to make sure that you're able to slide so at this point I kind of just give it a shimmy and I can slide it which is good I flip it over I look at the overlap um, the overlapping space I kind of adjust if it's angled funny and then I give it a good crease lift this up put some adhesive down up to the point where I know it's not gonna go right it can only go that far and stick that down. Oops, got some on there. <laughs> that is why we still have one of these too, which I think you can get at the dollar store. It's just a little gummy adhesive eraser. Great for using with the multi-purpose liquid glue, by the way. So we've turned to the front again. And now if you look at this belly band, that piece is longer. Um, for this piece, we need to trim it down. So I, when I was creating this, I said, okay, this piece is gonna go about there. So when I cut this, I'm gonna cut it at about there. And that'll get tucked under here. And then this piece, I'm gonna cut around here. So you could use that for something else if you wanted to. But now we have our two pieces ready to put on with our adhesive. So again, grabbing that sponge, putting our adhesive directly onto the back side. You have to keep moving this on your silicone pad so, or your silicone sheet so that you don't get adhesive on the front side of your pieces. Okay, so we really only have like one clear glueless spot left and I think it's up here. <laughs> there we go. That's gonna get stuck down here. I have two more steps. I'm gonna move that out of the way. We're gonna bring in the pearls we're gonna bring in a blends marker and we're gonna bring in dimensionals. We need dimensionals on the back side of this piece and we could certainly just do two, I'll do three. I'll do three. Pull off the release paper, this will give it a lift so that's gonna get stuck down. And what I'm doing is I'm looking at the lines that are on this paper lattice and I'm trying to kind of make sure that we have the same amount of um, imagery on, the, on each side of that. So you can see it comes out to here and then it comes out to here. We got like one little gap on each side, right? Okay, then we need this embellishment. To get that embellishment, we just color the pearls. So we're gonna grab our blends marker and I like the brush tip for coloring onto pearls. And you wanna grab a pearl that hasn't been lifted off already because um, the ones that have already been lifted off and then stuck back on to try to save, they're hard to color. They kind of move around on you. So color one that has not been lifted yet. Just color on top and then go around the sides of it and let it sit for, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. And while we are doing that, I'm gonna get my gummy end of my take your pick tool ready. So the gummy end is another so you got pokey ends you got a spatula end you've got stylus tools that can be inserted here you've got another tool that you can buy separately that's good for detailed dies but this here you see how it's got a crank on it you can keep on tightening that and it will make this gummy stuff come out even further 
don't even know if that's the official name for it. I call it gummy. But <laughs> this helps to pick up embellishments. So if you're grabbing a pearl, you just push on top and then push away and it'll pick it up. I'm not going to do that one though. Okay, so where do the pearls go? We have one on the inside of the card and we have one on the outside. So I'm going to go ahead and take this belly band off. Get our tools ready here. So we're going to push and we're going to stick it right at the top of our eye for the biggest wish or biggest thanks, sorry. And then this one's going to go right inside as if it's um, kind of like the, the hook on the wall. And those are evening evergreens. So they're not black. They're not black. They actually coordinate with the card. <laughs> all right, we can pop all of this out like that. I don't know. Is that the best look? And then this one, we'll seal that shut with our belly band so you can see the front and the back at the same time. And I think we got it all in the picture so you can see it all. Isn't that awesome? Such a fun card. Um, so I can't wait to see the kinds of balcony cards that you create. Some of you who follow me on Facebook, you do um, post to, here we go, there's the little thing. You do post your ideas, the things that you've recreated, either in my Facebook page, I love seeing them there, or you can even go to um, my Facebook group, um, Stamp Your Art Out group it's called, join there and you can share in that spot. Uh, it's really fun to see all the variations that you come up with. So that is um, the card that I have for you today. We have prizes, and I think I went through all the announcements already. The announcements were last chance list items, clearance rack items, um, free shipping, free shipping today only, $50 minimum order in the US. Um, I think it's 65 in Canada, I can't remember. Um, and then other areas of Stampin' Up! Just figure out your minimum and then take advantage of it. It's on online orders. You can call your demonstrator directly and place an order with them. It's for demonstrator orders too. So if you're a demonstrator, order from yourself and take advantage of that. Plus you get your demonstrator discount on top of it. Uh, prepaids. So if you're a Paper Pumpkin fan, you should take advantage of this day too. I am ordering a 12 month prepaid at this time um, because uh, I want to get the free shipping on it because a prepaid does have shipping costs that are added into it just because it's treated like another product. That's why the pricing is so different on the prepaids because we also pay the shipping. So it might look like it's less, but usually you have the shipping added, which comes out to kind of balance it out. On a 12 month prepaid, you're saving money though. Six month prepaid, you're also saving money. Make sure that you, if you're a Paper Pumpkin fan, you're getting prepaids. They override those codes that you get when you purchase a prepaid override your credit card that's in your account so that your um, credit card just kind of sits dormant for a while while your prepaid does all the work and gives you those paper pumpkin kits that you've prepaid for. I could go, I could do a whole story on that, a whole video on that. <laughs> but get your wish list going, get your Christmas presents, you know, take advantage of it today. Anything else that I want to share? Um, I think that's it. I am going to go live next Wednesday, December 15th. But the Wednesday after that is right before the holidays and it's in between um, Christmases with my family. So I will not be going live on the, I believe that's the 22nd. So, um, so mark your calendars if you, if you follow my, my lives. We're gonna move this aside. These are the prizes. I have three more. I tell you, I had a lot of these, you guys. Three more of the Stampin' Pierce mats. These are the ones that are barely touched. They were just for stamping on top of. You get a pack of dimensionals and you get a Stampin' Pierce mat. It's always nice to have an extra one of these. Um, you could use the back side for poking if you want to and the front side for stamping. Um, or if you already have one of these, maybe the one that you've been living with for a long time can become your pokey one, the one that you just kind of start beating up. Um, I'll show you my pokey one, hang on. I have only four left. I'm keeping four. <laughs> so this is my pierce, piercing one that I batter up. I just pierce away at it. And this is the one for stamping. So prizes. Last week we had a winner. Let me put that person's name up on my computer screen. We had a winner and that person, tell me if I'm right or wrong. I believe, no, what was it last week? I don't remember. <laughs> 
Because I feel like um, these guys were already given out, right? Was the iridescent rhinestones and the half pack of um, of sweet talk paper? Oh shoot, <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> okay, so whatever the prize was last week, this person and I'll put her name up or his name up. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, it must be a her. Snowy mom. It says. Oh. <laughs> And I already announced it. Snowy Mom, you are the after live winner. You get the third prize. And then Trisha already called out the prize winners for today. Just now, Carol Bates and Naomi Davis, you are the prize winners for the Stamp and Pierce mat and the um, the uh, 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 dimensionals. <laughs> Yay! We did it. We got through. And I'm going to let you all go. Thanks for joining me. I hope I didn't forget anything. Sometimes I do, but I think I got it all right. So, all right, take care everyone. <laughs> now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye-bye.